Understanding, uh, understanding uh, the um, all the the liturgic calendars which um, revolve around um, the the, uh, the the Lord Jagannath, connected in all the houses, all the household here, and uh, it determines the determines the uh, of the people. So their beliefs there. So uh, all this was equally important for me as to learn dance. So dance was not separated at all from all this. Still learning, still researching, still understanding what, what is behind, from where uh, this dance uh, uh, come. And, and this is what um, it worked. So well. well, that I couldn't live anymore. And the two things, the two streams which were separated, the philosophical research, spiritual research. When I said spiritual is for me, not much in a sense of uh, insert, insert, uh, in, in, in the meaning, uh, in the sense of uh, doing certain uh, puja or rituals. For me, um, spiritual is... Uh, Ground me, which which uh, give the uh, groundness and the roots to find the roots of uh, whatever expression I I with, with maybe a physical expression of what is behind it, what, what is uh, which uh, uh, make the expression uh, meaningful to me. So this is what I mean for that, and and uh, I found uh, this deep depth of meanings form of expression, which was Odyssey dance. Uh, because of all this background and all this uh, um, culture which was assimilated into it. So the same posture which I was seeing uh, um, doing uh, by life while making the, the chapati was the same pose which I was seeing in the temple sculpture, with the same pose which I was learning in the dance. All this, the same uh, ritual, the same sloka, the, the pujari would uh, done, would uh, sing for the arati, it was the same sloka that we were learning uh, in, the, in the classroom. And uh, the, the diagrams uh, with the young, the, the, uh, the, the uh, were designing outside the, 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 the doors uh, or, or for the puja or for the, uh, where, where to be. Uh, um, as, as symbols of, uh, uh, of a very uh, ancient uh, uh, kind of uh, um, ritualistic uh, um, meanings, which, which I wanted to, to, to search, to go deep in it. And then w once you go deep, you find that there is one root for all this, a form of uh, expression which is not only physical, but uh, um, it involves uh, the mind, the soul, uh, and uh, it, you can really spend more than one lifetime to um, behind it. Uh, and maybe I would also say that uh, um, I was very uh, when when I left uh, from Italy, our experience as women are that uh, to find our identity and uh, uh, as women. We had to rebel, we had to be very much aggressive to break. And it was important. It was important. And maybe if that moment was not there, we would have left and search our uh, uh, search for our way uh, far away. Or maybe, I mean, that moment of rebellion was important. I came here, I revalued a lot of elements of femininity, which we were we had uh, uh, discarded or uh, we were thinking that it was a um, uh, symbol of uh, a um, uh, element of weakness or uh, submission or uh, uh, which, which uh, we wanted to assert ourselves in uh, um, and uh, to, to so it was so w when I came here I, I uh, valued so many um, important roles that uh, the women was were holding here in this society. Uh, sounds strange that uh, a, 
a rebel and a, a revolutionist and a, a feminist, um, may value certain things which, from another, may, may look like a, a traditional which has to be broken. But for me, coming from that past, uh, the, the fact that a woman <coughs> here was uh, the, uh, the person who transmitted certain values through certain ritualistic uh, practice, which was she was maintaining it, and was the, the, the main uh, uh, focus and the main center, the family, the strength, which, which uh, was maintaining the static, the, the, something which was to the root of the culture. So this was which I valued and uh, um, start to appreciate. Sometimes you need to come from uh, culture to uh, to realize what uh, of your of of, uh, of your role. So um, so this uh, rediscovery of the role of uh, women as deposit of culture. And uh, to give value to this, uh, um, it holds the tradition through certain repetition of certain rituals to co which connect to the, to the past, to the roots. And femininity in, in, uh, in terms of... Uh, so all this uh, was together. And, uh, but you, see, you have also hard that uh, I was I'm doing Chow and Odyssey so um, there also it's uh, um, interesting in a, in a sense that although uh, in the beginning of, uh, my Odyssey guru was not so uh, happy that um, I, I was because I was he was afraid that the Chow movement would hamper the, the Odyssey one but later on uh, he approved when he saw my Chow but for me it was important some masculine energy of me were being, uh, uh, being expressed to the Chow and the feminine part through the Odyssey. So it became a, a, a more a complementary sort of, uh, of uh, expression. So these are the things which I wanted to highlight. Mostly it was, the, it is the, the importance of being able to, I, we, we started from there and uh, didn't talk, didn't deal much about the Odyssey as such, but uh, I, I thought that it is important at this point when uh, the uh, teaching and the learning, it becomes, uh, uh, has become a very mechanical process and more, more and more now that we are going in the net and in the uh, online uh, teaching, but if we, we all hope that this is just a, a temporary thing, so I wouldn't like to, to hold this as a, as a uh, permanent solution, none of us wants. Um, but even before, this um, just mechanical imbibing and learning and reproducing physically certain things with a little bit of understanding of superficial meaning, uh, not enough. This is not, not enough in a sense that uh, you don't really, um, you, you don't really uh, utilize the richness and the depth knowledge and of this tradition. So uh, it, it is wasting a lot of uh, uh, um, aspects of this tradition. If you don't try to go deep and interrelate all this, something else. So the philosophy behind the visual perception, the um, meaning uh, of the of the literature, the ritualistic which is there, the liturgy, the um, so whatever uh, it is connected in a culture which is very complex and composite. I would maybe open up uh, the. Uh, any question in a, uh, so that uh, I can um, other uh, other in a uh, subject if anybody wants me to direction of my talk. So um, up to now, uh, as I said, uh, uh, the 
interrelation in unity uh, uh, women in uh, as a ritualistic uh, in the transmission of uh, and, uh, traditions uh, so these are a little bit the um, uh, um, I wanted to uh, highlight uh, so maybe my relation with uh, with Guruji also would be uh, but uh, let me understand what if somebody wants to to know energy for this uh, um, for for, for uh, sharing your uh, journey and uh, the topics that you've touched upon um, right now there are uh, we are uh, waiting for students to uh, type in their questions okay. so i would request all the students who are there uh, to kindly um, type in your questions in the chat pod there is a small uh, conversation uh, icon uh, on your screen. Please press on that and enter whatever questions you would like to ask uh, Ileana Ji into that chat board. Um, so while the students are writing, actually, Ileana Ji, I had a question of my own, uh, if I may ask so. Mm -hmm. So you've spoken about interconnection and uh, how, like, you know, uh, everything around you, uh, your learning was within the classroom and outside as well. And um, you yourself have uh, trans uh, have uh, learned multiple expression forms, be it theater, be it uh, classical dance, be it folk dance. So that's that's very interesting and very rare to see. Usually we see uh, artists conforming to a particular uh, uh, style of study or discipline of study. And here you have transgressed all of those disciplines. So how uh, can you just talk a little bit about that between theater and then Kathakali, which is a which is though a classical form, comes from a different part of the country, has its own set of disciplines, and then there is UDC, which is own uh, with its own uh, like you know rule book or with its own uh, grammar, and then there is Chow, which is a completely folk dance, which is completely uh, to to an initiated mind feels completely different from how you study a classical art form. So how, how easy or difficult was it for you to transition between these? Well, um, the theater work was, uh, of course, uh, belonging to my first avatar, as I call it. Right. Uh, so I, uh, that was uh, when I was still searching. Right. It was in the, on, in the process. Uh, so um, it, it was, a, th there are many th different ways of uh, theater. The first one, which I, I went through, it was more conventional. So it was more... Uh, depending on uh, recitation to the words. Mm -hmm. They didn't get much importance to the physical uh, um, work. Mm -hmm. Actually, probably my uh, instinct was uh, driving me towards more physical expression. So mm -hmm. I didn't uh, I didn't go to dance immediately, but there was at that point, at that time in the 70s, um, there was this uh, experimental theater which was started by Jesse Grotowski from mm -hmm. Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, the physical, physicality, of the actor was explored a lot. In fact, the, the, um, Grotowski also got a lot of inspiration from uh, uh, movement and uh, exercise from uh, from uh, Japan, from uh, the, the, mm. the North no Theater, and from um, Katakali, also from India. And um, a system in which it was a research through the body mm -hmm. uh, for, as a form of expression, but it was still theater. Mm -hmm. um, so that was... Uh, the, the process at, uh, through which I, I, uh, I went. And the Katagali was uh, a, a lecture demonstration which I saw in Italy during my theater uh, research. And uh, this uh, Krishna Mudiri had come to Italy, so that was my first approach. Mm -hmm. The Indian um, uh, philosophy in, uh, in, in my, uh, for my um, uh, university exams. But uh, uh, I had not uh, approached anything regarding uh, a performing art in, in, in India. Uh, so the first uh, visual uh, um, experience which I had, it was by Krishna Nambudiri, who came to mm -hmm. Italy, my own place. And he demonstrated mm -hmm. how this, this grammar of the body was so um, detailed that each, mm -hmm. each uh, muscle, is a small micro movement uh, had a meaning. So for me, it was a revelation because I was already starting to uh, improvise, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have a grammar behind. Mm -hmm. So we, we 
were using the hands, we were, we were changing the, going up the tree and using projection and using um, all sorts of uh, to try to find a way of uh, a, a grammar. But the grammar was not there at, 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 uh, for us. We were to search through improvising and, uh, and uh, trying. So mm -hmm. when I saw that this complex grammar and so systematic was there, then I uh, asked him immediately if I could learn. So, so that one was my first approach because he came to us. So right. how I came to know that the existence of this. So the first approach and the first chance to uh, to, to learn something, it was in Kerala, in uh, Sri Krishnapura. And the workshop was for three months. So uh, at the end of it, um, so I went back, I tried to utilize some of those movements. At the end of it, uh, he told me um, there is another beautiful style. He had met Sanjukta Panikrai in, um, in Europe, mm -hmm. and he liked the Odyssey a lot. Uh, uh, Krishna Nambudiri, he had a special um, liking for, for Odyssey. Mm -hmm. So he directed me to um, San Sanjunani in, uh, in Orissa, and I just went to her for a month in uh, 78 without mm -hmm. knowing anything about Odyssey, without knowing anything about her and animals and patients to, uh, um, to teach me something. And I went back to Italy and uh, uh, I tried to experiment with these movements, which I learned from Katakali mm -hmm. and Odyssey my theater work and when I came back I thought that because I thought that if I want really to utilize this was must be my purpose to utilize this movement for my theater experiments mm -hmm. I had to learn something more uh, I came directly to Kaluchara Mahapatra whose name mm -hmm. I had heard the previous year but right. I never met it's history in the sense that from there I never moved so everything Disappear. The, uh, the Italy, uh, Kerala, Ketakali, and uh, only uh, Odyssean was taking me to Guruji house every day, was there. But Chao came as a um, complementary to the mm -hmm. form, as I said, probably some of my more uh, masculine uh, energy had to be channelized into a, a more athletic type of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of, uh, of dance. Mm -hmm. But I suppose, you know, they are not um, contrasting, they are complementing each other. They are, come, they are from the same root, right. Orissa. Right. And right. although, uh, of course, uh, they may appear, but if in a, in a practical demonstration, you, you may also um, be able to see mm -hmm. how ending uh, Tribhangi pose, which is there in you know, this mm -hmm. is a little more uh, open up and mm -hmm. straighten up, it becomes the dharana of Chao. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, uh, maybe from outside one may think that uh, those two things are totally uh, different, but uh, uh, but yeah. of course um, there are many things which are contrasting. So that's why the fear of Guruji that the certain <laughs> movement would upset. The, the, right. the, the right. so that, that that is when you, you learn two forms uh, one has to be very careful uh, to separate but to me uh, these are the two forms uh, mm -hmm. so my theater and katakali was just a uh, entry entry form right. so the, the the way i i came i came here wonderful wonderful let me just quickly check if there are any questions from students. Uh, okay, I think they're still making up their mind what to ask. Uh, students, this is a very interesting opportunity, a very, uh, what do you say, a great opportunity for you to directly converse with somebody who has had a lifetime experience in understanding art and studying art. So don't worry about the, the type any type of question that you would have that you would like to ask Liana ji, you should definitely take this opportunity and ask. If you have a man in Hindi or English, you will not be able to ask you this question. You will have this opportunity to ask another question. I have one more question for you from my end. Uh, so, um, I 
I mean, um, this might, it's a little away from the, the discussions that we have had and more to do with our uh, personal everyday experiences. So how easy was it for you to, to uh, substitute cheese with, with the curd and the type of food that you've had in India? Because, I mean, um, food, way of clothing, um, climate, everything. These are everyday uh, occurrences that affect us, which we do not really account for. But the minute it changes, it starts affecting our psyche, it starts affecting our mentality. So coming from two different, what do you say, like um, climatic zones, cultural zones, everything. How, how was that transition for you? That was the, the less um, difficult things for me. Uh, already before leaving from there, as I told you I was quite a rebel, so I had already discarded many all the non-veg uh, habit uh, which was there over there okay. in uh, our Western culture. I mean, now okay. many, many people many people have become vegetarian there, but uh, 40, 40 right. years ago was not so common. So okay. yeah, I, ha I was already cultivating my own uh, kitchen garden mm -hmm. uh, with the soya, and uh, so I was cooking in my clay pot. Uh, so. Con <laughs> fighting with my mother uh, to, to get the uh, space on, in the gas stove to have my own food. <laughs> so, okay. so I was, uh, and I'm quite Spartan in my way of living. So I'm adjusting very, very much. I don't like cooking. So um, whatever uh, people cook for me, <laughs> I'm very happy. And uh, so cooking and eating has never been uh, a, a major problem. Um, so adjusting to also climate, I, I, I suppose the passion and the determination which was there, uh, it was really taking away all uh, the other things which uh, I didn't even notice mm -hmm. the, the, what I was facing. So um, I should uh, I should say that uh, other things uh, maybe sometime would have uh, had been more difficult, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, the cultural restriction which were there. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I was not here as an anthropologist, I was not here to study very cold, cool mind, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, uh, uh, just the, the habits of uh, of uh, of the people standing right. outside from that. Right. Involved emotionally and much inside in the mm -hmm. process. So, mm -hmm. if some, certain things was. Uh, um, close to me, the denied to me mm -hmm. uh, certain things uh, because certain spaces, certain place in the house I could not go because mm -hmm. I was not belonging to that particular culture uh, or uh, certain. Um, so those uh, sometimes emotionally would uh, would uh, be difficult to uh, to face. And mm -hmm. um, but then uh, luckily I would switch on my analytical mind mm -hmm. and uh, understand that. Those were uh, to be understood inside the value of that culture, and they were not a personal uh, uh, against me. So it was not a personal attack on me, but what I was representing as, as sure. belonging to another culture. So those those were more uh, uh, something difficult to, to face. But mm. as far as um, food and climate and uh, all these things, so <laughs> and I. I I was in Katak, not even in a big metropolis, and uh, okay. that was right. 40 years ago. So right. uh, I don't know how many of you can imagine. I think no, none of you can imagine because you're all too young. But uh, it was basically a totally another ambience from uh, what it is now. Yeah. True. true, very true. And I think for uh, speaking for the younger generation, like, uh, for, for Gen Z, I think this is this is something that we need to learn because uh, we are a, a generation of instant gratification and you know always trying to create our own comfort zones and our own spaces wherever we wish to go. Even if we are traveling, we prefer to try our own comforts and like you know and not really experience or uh, see things uh, the way they are outside. So okay, we have two questions in the chat pod. He is asking, uh, uh, did you not feel, ma'am, that this is something out of track and I should go back and do what you used to do with your decisions, but still the society to make you think in various ways possible? How easy or hard it was to be so firm on your decision? I think it's a wonderful question. Thank you, uh, Sakshi, for that question. Ilyana ji, what, what was that driving force behind the passion? 
you stand so strong in all these years well i i think uh, my my talk was the the fact that uh, this that synthesis which mm-hmm. uh, which i had not found in the in uh, all my search before it happened here find actually what you are searching mm-hmm. um, and that that um, so you are ready to start all over again i uh, when i started here it was like i was like a child because i was uh, i have to learn how to walk mm-hmm. in the, the first steps and uh, i was already adult but um, I, i had to learn all the meanings to learn uh, uh, how people were living how to live here and uh, it was a second childhood for me mm-hmm. but um opt out i mean as i said uh, i it could have been only for a few months or uh, one or two years uh, learning some part of dance and going back so that would be that would have been more normal uh, type of uh, experience but probably uh, because of of the fact that uh, this uh, this uh, physical work which i had uh, i i i was learning and mm-hmm. me also in my intellectual search in my spiritual search in a sense of philosophy philosophical uh, search which uh, for me it was also very important mm-hmm. because through dance i was going inside in all these uh, um, symbol symbols of um, and symbol rituals and philosophy and uh, so all the complex uh, uh, base uh, the root of this culture so so dance was uh, um, just a entry point to a larger world so uh, that is what um, made the things work so i never regret for a single moment and that i was here maybe also i should say that many things that i had finished uh, uh, before i come i come here many experience uh, uh, certain relationship uh, love relationship and uh, uh, certain things were uh, had come to an end uh, mm-hmm. in ending phase there probably i was even uh, other ways as a, in my personal life ready to uh, start all over again in that uh, that um, uh, Uh, it was a guarantee that this would work i mean it could have been a phase of search in in a further phase like it was the theater like it was the, 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 the start. so it, it could have been just a phase and then going to something else mm-hmm. it worked and um, of course uh, i give a lot of credit to um, uh, and all the beautiful culture which i found here I think um I think your story is a testament to that fact that if you want something then the whole universe conspires to give it to you. <laughs> if you Yeah, if you, you just have to to have faith in life. You just you just have to faith, I mean I just followed the indication in my life and you have to be, to have faith in these indications because uh, actually they'll bring you somewhere. How oh, true. faith faith i think uh, i think we have a saying in hindi do we not that ummeed pe puri duniya kaim hai faith is what anchors the whole world and makes it go on thank you very much i have another question here uh, it has been asked uh, from miss koko negi and she is asking what is the best time for practice for any dance form best time <laughs> but uh, i think more than time i would say the to, that the best way is to practice every day continuity is very important uh for certain exercise of course um that warming up exercise breathing exercise some yoga exercise mm-hmm. those uh, of course it is in the morning time mm-hmm. but the practice of dance i i think i really think that um uh pick say schedule in your in your day and suppose you are a working woman or you are a start you are a student or um so it it may not be possible to fix uh, the ideal time for uh, for a practice but important is that you are able to fix up a time for your practice so it may be any time of the day according to doing because other way it happens that uh, no if if the practice uh, it is ideal in the morning and i'm studying i'm doing tuition i'm uh, i'm working i can't do so those are all things which are very easily uh, yeah. said 
to make it continue, it is important. So that schedule should be continued every day. Mm -hmm. So the practice has to be continued every day. Doesn't matter if uh, if uh, the, your, your timing is um, morning or evening or afternoon. That that but you maintain it. Okay. Uh, Pooja, uh, just taking on that, yes, uh, whatever ma'am has said just now, I'd like to ask, uh, do you find your students, like uh, this present generation students that are there, do you find the same amount of dedication or passion or, or is it like they just want to learn something? I, ha I know ODC dance and I have learned it and they just... Uh, uh, they just forget about it after some time. It, it's, do you find that there is that same amount of passion and dedication that uh, you found in yourself in uh, the students that are there today? Do you find that? Well, no. <laughs> it's very. Uh, I mean, uh, each each of the students have their own uh, uh, story behind, their own ambitions, their own, uh, uh, and also. They are, uh, they are also, um, especially here uh, in Orissa, there are uh, certain limitations. Uh, so not uh, maybe uh, everybody is able to um, to realize what is their really uh, their passion in life and to to be able to fight for it. Maybe maybe surrender. Maybe many of them still surrender to the circumstances. Uh, um, so. One is to be a fighter a little bit to um, to be able to push your own uh, mm. life and to even if you don't understand exactly what it is, but there is something which pull you towards something. And there are not, uh, I mean, uh, in general, one cannot uh, expect a, a total dedication to dance from all these people who come to dance. But uh, it would be nice if. Um, at least few would be inspired uh, by by my total uh, dedication to it, and uh, and that would be a great achievement for a for a guru. So um, it's not an easy job to 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 teach dance nowadays because uh, so many. I mean, I'm not talking about this uh, particular period of uh, of COVID, but uh, there are so many. Um, there are so many diverse, diversion and uh, so many things which are valued more. Mm -hmm. uh, so either these values are uh, uh, the values which the student itself mm -hmm. are uh, the, the best or they are uh, imposed on them by the society, mm -hmm. the family or uh, so. So it's a, it's a, it's a to be young, it's not an easy, easy phase of life. So I wish them all the best, even if uh, they, they may not uh, continue in dance, but I wish them to, to find uh, really their own, not uh, something which is imposed by the, by the others, by others on them. Wow, that is that is so encouraging and inspiring. Anna Kalaji, it was yes, I very think, true. Very, very true. A mark of a true guru is not to like, you know, it, it just fills everybody up with so much of inspiration and understanding what everybody is going through. Okay, we have another question, Srit Behra, uh, who is asked. Uh, from Ma'am, he's asking, what do you like about Guru Deva Prasad Das's style? I think this is a student of uh, yeah. of ODC and you're asking about Guru Deva Prasad Das's style that you admire or you like. But whatever I know about the style, because I have not learned directly any, uh, didn't have any uh, direct experience, but mm -hmm. I, I observe and saw him uh, even demonstrating and uh, also during certain seminars which were there in the 84-5 in the Ulysses Research Center where he talked about uh, his, um, his own uh, upbringing and uh, his own uh, training and uh, his, uh, his own uh, uh, conception of the Odyssey. And um, in observing uh, his uh, Abhinaya, mm -hmm. I, there is a certain simplicity which I like and uh, uh, I think uh, the certain... Um, Softness and uh, uh, especially in the Abhinaya, I, I don't have much in mind 
about, uh, uh, of course, uh, if I think about the Nritta, the pure dance, I, I can I imagine immediately a, a very strong choker, um, quite rare uh, in, in other styles. And uh, I think that is a peculiarity. I remember that in one of the seminars, he said that one of the practice they were doing, the small kids, and he was going to the Dakara, uh, he, they were putting water on the floor and with the chunka to wipe off the water. So, so much pressure and so much sitting on chunka mm -hmm. with, the, with the feet we were supposed to wipe them. So, uh, so that is it as far as Rita is concerned, but as far as Abinaya is concerned, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, the, um, that, that um, simple type, uh, sim simplicity is there and uh, very, very, um, I mean, uh, soft and, uh, and simple and uh, not too much uh, uh, elaborate or complex uh, as, a, as a compositions. So the rendering, it's uh, maybe more uh, uh, easy to uh, to understand than uh, maybe some of the Keruchan and Moapatra compositions, which are um, so simplicity I like, and uh, the fact that uh, he researched a lot and he tried to uh, connect with the folk tradition. And um, uh, so he, in, in actually, he, he was um, um, he, he was uh, in, uh, including in, including the certain uh, folk uh, folk tradition in the in his rendition, because that was part mm -hmm. of his upbringing. So I appreciate that um, uh, he didn't discard that, and um, he was able to uh, create a, a, a style which um, uh, would um, in, include. Those also those um, folk uh, movement that he had learned, as a good or uh, even Chow, uh, mm -hmm. he, he had learned. So, um, being near to the traditional forms is uh, is one of his major as asset. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, we have uh, another uh, question, uh, two set of questions really from Anita Rani Pani Grahi. Uh, first question is, I think uh, she wants to ask about uh, your thoughts on Sambalpur dance. And uh, the second question is, how should she improve her uh, practice? So her question is, ma'am, how can I improve my steps in dance? Or how she can improve her sadhana? Uh, I should see her. <laughs> that to me. <laughs> Some practical advice. What is her weak point? Right. So I don't know uh, if it is um, uh, uh, what is, I mean, she has to be more specific uh, where, where are her difficulties physically. Uh, because right. uh, it's uh, quite demanding uh, on the knee. Uh, mm -hmm. So one has to build up uh, a strong muscle uh, mm -hmm. on the on the top of the knee and on the, on, um, the, the, the one which are before the knee and uh, by contraction and uh, so those are all warming up exercise which one should do before starting to put pressure on it in a proper mm -hmm. uh, steps mm -hmm. so so these exercise are very important so um, you are, usually it is the knee or the lower back these are the two problems which uh, one can um, face mm -hmm. so certain exercise preparing that preparing the, the body to and preparing the body means to strengthen the muscle which are around uh, that particular weak point. Mm. Hold the, the weight and uh, will save the joint on the joint. So, okay. so this is the basic things. But I don't know exactly what uh, she's uh, having, where she's having difficulties. Okay. Okay. And uh, something about Sambalpuri dance she was asking you. Sambalpuri dance. <laughs> So, yeah, Sambalpuri, I, I'm just like a spectator because uh, uh, I've, I've not learned it, but uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's amazing uh, when, when it is well done. And uh, I wonder how they can, uh, again, so much uh, sitting down and uh, mm -hmm. uh, with, with the totally bent on the knee and, uh, and mm -hmm. dancing uh, uh, for so long uh, with those in that position. Uh, and the rhythmic, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, so it's a very uh, 
I mean, as a dance, which uh, immediately uh, one can respond to it. And uh, th this is actually the peculiarity of um, many folk forms, mm -hmm. which really get you into the rhythm immediately as soon as they come, they, they start mm -hmm. to, to happen. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a final question. We have time for one final question, and then I think uh, Kalaji can uh, take us to the conclusion. So Ravi is asking, um, promote our culture of dance in foreign countries. And what are the steps you think will uh, facilitate this and make it easier? Uh, well, uh, I can talk about my experience in the sense that whenever I wanted to present this dance in Italy, for example, just to put this uh, dance in a proper dance festival. So mm -hmm. I never wanted to um, connect this dance with the idea of uh, exotic uh, or uh, uh, religious or uh, I, I, I wanted to uh, appreciate them as a, as a dance form. Mm -hmm. So I, it was not easy, but uh, my, uh, all my uh, attempts and my, uh, yeah, it was to, um, present, to, to propose it to certain organizers who didn't know exactly what it was, so it was always very to, 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 to be accepted. But uh, I wanted to put it in a prestigious platform where the previous day maybe there was a classical ballet company, mm -hmm. Western classical ballet company, and the next day, I mean, a proper dance festival. So, okay. so because there is so many misconceptions uh, uh, in, in the West about. Uh, some of them thought that it was slow and it was a meditation and it was so to to uh, to to make them realize that it actually is a dance form. Mm -hmm. I, this is what was my ambition. So, but then uh, every place is uh, is uh, of course uh, it would be nice to have a context uh, if, mm -hmm. if they are to have only single performance. The, all the festival of India, which uh, the government has organized, those are very uh, nice, uh, very uh, useful context because mm -hmm. one doesn't see only the dance, but also then they, they see, they, they see, they, they mm -hmm. hear a talk, they see a, a, a music performance, and I mean they, they create an ambience of uh, Indian culture which is more complex. True. But if one has to present only a dance performance, then it has to the, the place has to be chosen properly and mm -hmm. in the, the right dignity. It has to be uh, the, given the, to the form. Wonderful. Very true. Very true. Kalaji? So very good. Thank you, Pooja. Uh, thank you, Ilyana Chitti. Your thoughts on how you picked up dance from the very simple activities that are performed around us. Uh, your simple example of how Chiranji's wife, she was uh, making a chapati and how you picked up there and how you see movements around you throughout the environment are extremely uh, inspirational there because it also tells us that there is so much of movement around us where we can take it up and we can everything dancing around us then that's such a beautiful way that you had put it up I really loved that a lot thank you so much and um for telling us uh, so many different uh, aspects of your life and the way that you have come so far. Truly an inspiration to all of us. <laughs> I would say that. And I wish we could have uh, an iota of your passion that drives you. No, it doesn't matter which generation it is, I think. It doesn't matter yeah. there because, as you said, because you said that you were an adult and you came here and you learned uh, Odissi. So I, I think age has no factor there. But uh, that passion is something which is so very important that drives everything. And um, I wish that we had that iota of passion that you have. And, uh, and I'm sure that you have infused something in us through your talks that you have done oh, today. That would be really great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired at least that it, and I think I can vouch for Pooja also that she's also inspired for that. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so and, much. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Ilyana Ji, for coming here, taking out your precious time and sharing such beautiful thoughts. It's really started off a very beautiful morning 
and has given the right footing to a workshop to be started, uh, which has, the message has gone so clearly to the students. Uh, not uh, say anything more because that's exactly what you have done. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for coming here and being with us with the Spikmake Anubhav. Thank you. 